Reality is that thing that's unmovable, unshakable, indestructible. When we understand what is real, we are able to no longer allow that thing that is not real to dictate how we feel. The vast majority of what really makes people feel crappy is not real at all, is it? There's no truth in the story. I want you just to say that. There's no truth in the story. There's no truth in the story. So Becca was describing it as, the other night, as perception. It's what I'm seeing around me. It's how I'm experiencing things. In other words, it's the lens through which I'm seeing. That's what I would say. I would call it the lens. Perception is the lens through which you are experiencing this world. Perceptions. Most people believe that this is real. So they walk through the store, somebody gives them a look, they immediately think that that's a bad look, and they get into a huge fight in the store. How can you look at me? You think I'm stupid, and you're thinking blah, 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 blah. And they, next thing you know, they're in jail. Now their perception is I'm in jail, my life is horrible, all because somebody looked at me bad. It was their fault I'm in jail, not mine. Their fault. They caused this. They hadn't have given me that bad look when I was walking through the store. None of this would have ever happened. You ever have any experiences like that? Where somebody or yourself was blaming your own experience on somebody else? You know what I teach all my children? When one of my children comes to me and says they tattle on the other kid, Mom, Daddy, 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 Micah said I was stupid. I'm like, well, is it true? No, it's not true. Then why is it bothering you? And they say, because he's calling me stupid. And I look at him and I say, and it, and it makes me feel bad. And I said, no, no, no. Other people are incapable of making you feel bad. Only you can make yourself feel bad. You have the ability and the power to perceive what they're saying and to allow what they're saying to impact you or to recognize that what they're saying is untrue and not allow it to impact you. You have the power. You're choosing to feel bad. No one has ever made you feel bad. It is purely perceptional. When you see through the lens that all is perfect, that all is good. This is what I would call the tree of life. Then what could be bad? What do I have to be afraid of? Even the worst possible situation is going to be beautiful. Why? Because it's perfect after all, isn't it? Yeah? You know, they say hindsight's twenty twenty. I could not tell you how many situations I've been through, how many tough times I walked through, only to realize later on that it didn't have to be that tough at all. If I had just known it was going to work out this well, if I had just known it was going to teach me the lessons that it taught me, I would have been celebrating the whole time. I would have been doing like a jig up in that thing, you know, because I'd have been like, yes, baby, bring it on. I wouldn't have been complaining or whining or, you know, I wouldn't have been doing any of that. But because I was so involved, I couldn't see beyond the situation I was in. My perception had become my reality. And when your perception is your reality, you're like a roller coaster. One minute you are on top of the world, things could not be better. And the next minute you're in the pits of shale. And things could not be worse.
Anybody ever experienced that roller coaster? Yeah. Yeah, it's not a lot of fun, is it? If you've been living on the roller coaster, what I would refer to as the merry-go-round, you're going around and around and around and around. This is what Christians refer to as seasonal existence, like seasons. And they, they've actually, you've actually been, Christians have actually been trained and taught that seasons are of God and that seasons is like you're supposed to be seasonal. Like you have a season of blessing and then you have a season of trial. You have seasons of, of struggle. You have seasons of wilderness. Anybody ever been taught that? I know I was taught that. And I think I think a lot of religious systems have this idea of seasons. And but I need you to recognize there's no truth in seasons. There's only it's a, only a perceptional reality. If you realize that your desert season was actually the season when the seed was growing in un, under the soil the most and, and the roots were all taking place, then you wouldn't actually call it a desert season, would you? You'd actually realize, wow, there's so much growth that took place. I just couldn't recognize it. Seasons end when you see that all is perfect. By the way, you've been, even in the scriptures, it says that you'd be grafted into the tree of life that bears its fruit year round. No more seasons. Wow. Your, your, your existence has never been meant to be a seasonal existence. It was meant to be a, a perpetual life-giving existence. It's not a seasonal of ups and downs, struggles, and, and, and success. All of that is perception. 100% of the seasonal existence that you have experienced to this point is your perceptions. Well, you say, well, isn't there seed time and harvest? For sure, absolutely. But what you're not recognizing is once the harvest gets come, comes in and doesn't look like there's much going on, it depends upon the field, depends upon the plant. You haven't even begun to think about the field, what's actually happening in the field. Like for instance, we, we just look at the fields and we allow, we allow society to tell us what's actually supposed to physically be taking place in our fields. And so they just rape the land over and over and over, growing stuff in the land, raping it, raping it, raping it, pulling all the nutrients out of the earth. Instead of allowing more of a, of a, what I love, permaculture. I would love to have a permaculture farm someday where people can come, just a, people can come and live and just share and, and, and where we can provide for community. Because it just effortlessly grows. It's perma, perma growing. The, the, where the land isn't being raped anymore, but it's actually providing all the nutrients it needs to continue to grow and grow and grow. And you can actually do that right in the middle of a desert. And people have greened entire deserts, parts of entire desert. When we begin to recognize that there is no more season, in the perfection of this moment, there is no more seasons. There doesn't have to be seasons anywhere. Now, I'm, I'm not against, I, I live in Virginia, and I'm not against the four seasons. I like a little snow, and I like the change in weather and stuff like that. I'm not talking about actual climate, although that can shift too. What, what, you, what people don't realize is the climate is actually... People think that what you plant in the earth, that what you plant in the earth depends upon where it is geographically. But actually the truth is what you plant in the earth changes the atmosphere. You can change the atmosphere. So you can plant plants that you would never think would grow in a certain area. And over the course of time, as they grow up, it will actually change the entire climate of that, of that, of that geographical spot. Anyway, um, what does this have to do with you? It has everything to do with you. Because you've been given dominion over all things, and yet because you've allowed your perceptions, for instance, I, I look out here, I say I live in Virginia. These are the kind of plants that grow in Virginia. I can't obviously plant plants that don't grow in Virginia. And I just allow the earth to tell me exactly what I'm supposed to do and what it's supposed to look like instead of creating a plane. Instead of deciding this is what I want the climate to look like and then beginning to allow that climate to take form in by and through my creative potential as a son of God, instead of doing that now, I've just given in and said, okay, well, this is the climate. This is what it looks like. These are the seasons. This is how it looks. This is what it's supposed to be. And we do this with our 
perceptional existence as well. We just go, well, you know, this is just, I'm just going through a tough economic time. Jesus said, you're like a pagan if you worry about what you're going to eat, what you're gonna, where, what you're, where you're going to sleep, that roof over your head, the food in your belly, the clothes on your back that keep you warm and, and help you survive. He said, you are like a pagan if you worry about such silly things. Why did he say that? because they're purely perceptional. Pure perception, they come and they go. But in the tree of life, there is no coming and going, there is no good and evil, there's just life. There's just perfection. There's just goodness. It is impossible for me to say all is perfect and then judge you for your imperfection. It is impossible for me to declare that all is good and all is perfect and then place judgment upon you. For me to do that, I have to submit myself to the same law used in making that judgment. That means I'm guilty. The Bible says I'm guilty of the same things. You who judge another, don't you know that you're guilty of the same things? Oh. In the tree of life, there is no guilty. In the tree of life, there is no judged. In the tree of life, there is no seasonal ups and downs. In the tree of life, because the tree of life is not perceptional. The tree of life is not your perceptional reality. The tree of life is the ultimate reality. And so we have this whole perceptional reality that we, humanity, has allowed to dictate, to, that has dictated to us the terms of our existence. We've just allowed it to tell us what is truth. And then people begin to look beyond that, and they actually begin to look at the playground itself, and they actually begin to see that maybe I've been afraid of this of the monkey bars for far too long. And then they look at the monkey bars and they're like, I think the monkey bars are going to be fun. So they change their perception and now they're actually able to play on the monkey bars and enjoy the monkey bars. This is how belief structures come and go and shift and change. How many of you guys have believed the exact same since the day of your birth? Okay. None of you, your beliefs have all shifted, grown, changed. Yes. Then were your beliefs ever real? <laughs> oh no you spent all this time trying to believe things see your beliefs are powerful this is what we create and play with here in the playground this world I call the playground this is how we create and we play and we enjoy ourselves my god you've been given a brain and you've been given a body enjoy them have fun on the playground. But if you buy into the perception and you believe that this is who you identified as, that body and that mind, then you'll, the playground will become your prison and you will be imprisoned by the thing you were meant to be enjoying and meant to be having dominion over. And this is what humanity has done. Who am I? What is my purpose? Is there more to life than this? Ecstasis Institute is relaunching this fall, providing students with the opportunity to explore the depths of who they truly are. An in-person or online institute where people of all backgrounds come to discover truth beyond any religion or philosophy. 
Awaken with us to your true divine purpose, being. See your vastness, that you are both nothing and everything, the Christ. Realize that you are life itself, one with God, one with all things. We offer three paths of study with Silas Valentine, a mystic teacher and mentor who for the past 20 years has been guiding students into their awakening. Choose from one of two general studies paths, or if you really desire to dive deep, participate in the mentorship path where you will receive one-on-one -on -one guidance and mentoring from Silas, as well as weekly classes. To find out more information on how you can participate, go to ecstasisinstitute.org. Your awakening is waiting.